On behalf of AARP, it is my privilege to welcome you today to the regional forums leading up to the White House Conference on Aging. AARP has a proud history of supporting the White House Conference on Aging, going back to the first one in 1961. In fact, it was at that first White House Conference on Aging that AARP joined forces with the Douglas Fir Ply Plywood Association in Tacoma, Washington, now the APA, the Engineered Wood Association, to build the House of Freedom. This was a model home that showcased universal design features that allowed people to live at home safely and independently. Since then, millions of Americans incorporated these features into their home. This is just one of the many ideas spawned by the five previous White House conferences on aging that have been improving the lives of people as they age for many years. That inaugural conference with a keynote by President Eisenhower had an enormous impact on millions of lives in many ways. Many credited with leading to the enactment of the Medicare and Medicaid program, as well as the Older Americans Act, which established the Federal Administration on Aging. Subsequent conferences generated practical ideas for abolishing mandatory retirement and creating cost of living adjustments for Social Security payments. Now, as we prepare for the 2015 conference, we can say with some pride that the landscape has changed for over older Americans since that first conference. And thanks to the improvements in the Medicare and Social Security and other policies that have improved the lives of older Americans, people today are living on average nine years longer than they did in 1961. I think we can all agree that the 50 plus of today is not like it was then or even like it was 10 years ago at the last White House conference. Innovative changes in technology, health care, and retirement security have transformed the experience of getting older. Because of the increased longevity and generally better health, we have opportunities for continued productivity and growth our parents and generations before us never had. We are a generation of makers and doers who have a desire to continue exploring our possibilities and to celebrate discovery over decline. That's the 50 plus that I identify with, one filled with new possibilities and great expectations. That optimism, that desire to live life on its own terms and to make a difference is very real. It reflects a belief that no one's possibilities should be limited by their age and indeed experience adds value. But I also know as the former head of AARP's foundation what else is real that real people face real challenges every day. And many of them struggle to meet their basic needs of health, financial, caring for themselves and their families. They need help and they need support. People don't want to be limited or defeated by these challenges. They want to overcome them. But, the many, but many of them face growing challenges as they get older and fear. Fear of living their, out, outliving their money, fear of failing health, fear of losing their independence and no longer being able to live in their homes, and the fear of becoming vulnerable to crime and to scams. Today's forum is an opportunity to put the spotlight on all of those fears and to talk about how to alleviate them. Today, we have the opportunity to disrupt aging to change the conversation in this country about what it means to grow older, to help people embrace aging as something to look forward to, not something to fear. One of the most important tasks we face as a nation is to build innovative systems that serve the wants and the needs of a new generation of aging Americans. We strongly believe that older Americans have earned a voice in the debate over issues that affect their lives. At this forum, you will have a chance to share your thoughts about the challenges and the opportunities associated with aging in four areas. The first, retirement security. Financial security is essential to the peace of mind for older Americans 
and it requires attention during our working lives to ensure that we are well prepared to live uh, for many, many years. Second, healthy aging. As medicine advances, the opportunities for older Americans to maintain their health and vitality should progress as well, and community supports are important tools to promote this vitality. Third, long-term services and support. Older Americans overwhelmingly prefer to remain independent in their communities as they age. They need supports to do this, including caregiving networks and well-supported workforces. And fourth, elder justice. Older Americans can be vulnerable to financial exploitation, abuse, and neglect. We need to protect seniors and other vulnerable groups from scam artists. Back in the 1950s when Ethel Percy Andrus created AARP, she expressed three goals for older Americans, to live with independence, with dignity, and with purpose. The policy issues have changed, of course, but as we hold today's regional forum, these values are as meaningful as ever. Dr. Andrus also once observed that each generation either brings new values by bringing vitality to the ideals or allows them through indifference to decay. Ever since the White House Conference on Aging, AARP has urged older Americans to speak out on the issues that affect their lives, to use their collective voice to unite behind a collective purpose. And now as we prepare for the sixth White House Conference on Aging, this forum is your opportunity to bring new vitality to the ideals, to help a new generation of older Americans live with independence, with dignity and purpose. Thank you very much.